Hey DIYers, welcome back. I've got the absolute easiest, undeniably simplest way to bury cable, electrical line, even small conduit in your yard. Now hold on, I know what you're thinking. This requires zero, I mean zero digging. So with that, take your shovels, put them away. Now I know what you're thinking. It also requires zero trenching. That's right, you're not gonna have to go out and rent a trencher to do this. When I show you this tool and what I'm about to do with it, it's gonna blow your mind. So what is that tool? Well, I'll show you. Let's get started. Now, before we get started, a little backstory. This is the Xfinity, my cable TV line that I'm going to plant in the ground. Now, you're probably thinking, why are you doing it? Why didn't, why didn't the cable company do it? That's an excellent question. Now, before we go any further and get started here, I very, very highly, strongly suggest that anybody living within the United States either calls 811 or goes online, in which in my case, I went online, and fill out the form before you dig. Now, for those of you that don't know what 811 is, it's a service here in the States that you can either call or, like I say, go online, and they'll send somebody out and they'll map out and tell you where your utilities are. I did that. I went online, they asked the project you're gonna do. In my case, I was redoing this beautiful fence here and putting in a concrete curb. I was also working out front and replacing the flower bed, and I filled all that information out. They asked where I was gonna be digging, house, and then the yard, and then they sent somebody out and the first guy that come out come out and marked out my cable tv line and he marked him out as you can see here right along the edge of the house and it turns and goes diagonal towards the back of the fence and before he left i asked about electrical lines and water and he said if there's any of those that are a problem they'll send somebody out for those he had to wait two weeks and then after two weeks nobody came out he was free to dig so that's what i did i waited two weeks nobody else come out cool i'm ready to go i can start digging so with the front flower bed i had no issues where the issue came was with this fence so when i was replacing my fence i had to dig for this concrete curb that i put in and where i came into cable that wasn't designated over here is when I went move my sprinkler heads out of the way so I could do this. And so as I was digging to move those, what do you know? I cut through my cable TV line and instantly I had no cable or internet, but they marked over there. My AT&T line was down there also. It's supposed to be over there. What's going on? And you know what the real kicker is? Is this is only about two inches in the ground. The AT&T line's at least six. So luckily I was only without cable for a couple of days. But when that guy came out, I told him, I said, I called 811. They marked along here as to where it was. I said, I got a video I can show you. He goes, don't matter. He said, they probably just ran across some other line in the ground. I'm thinking, but how did they get a signal? He goes, oh, I don't know. He said, they typically run the cable lines along fence borders of the property line. Just where this one is, right here. Next question I asked him, I said, how deep are those supposed to be? He goes, they're supposed to put them 12 inches. I said, oh, this one was barely two inches in the ground. He goes, yep, that's what they're supposed to do. So luckily I got a new cable line, didn't cost anything, and they were gonna come back and put it in. He said, well, wait until you're done with the fence and then have us come back. And I got to thinking, well, they put this one in two inches in the ground. Why do I want to come back and put another one just two inches in the ground when it's supposed to be 12? I'm a DIYer. I can do this myself. Now, where I got the idea for this tool I'm going to show you was in the van of the guy that came and put the cable in. I saw this kind of weird looking tool and I got to thinking, hmm, but that's what they do it with. Sure enough, it is. I found a place online where I could buy it and I'll leave a link to the website down below and I bought me one. But before we get to any of that, I'm gonna remove this cable line so it's out of my way. It's only two inches in the ground. I'm gonna be able to just pull it and yank it out. Let's do that first. So like I said, this cable's so shallow in the ground and it's rained quite a bit, the ground's pretty wet. I'm just gonna take and pull it out. No digging necessary. And then we'll just pack the dirt back in. Piece of cake. Same for this end. This ain't very hard to pull out at all. Okay, so I said there'd be no digging. Well, there'll be just a little bit in my case, but aren't you just a little curious? Is there really a cable line where they said there was? I'm betting there's not. I'm betting they picked up on the wire that runs the valves from my in-ground sprinkler system that runs right along here. I'll bet that's what they found. So let's dig out a little spot and see if we hit any cables. And if it's anything like that line I pulled out, it won't be very deep in the ground either. So we'll just cut us a little spot here. Sure enough, no cable. There's two lines from a sprinkler. Right there's the wire for the valves. No cable for AT&T or Verizon located in there anyway. Well, that clearly shows I had somebody out here that knew what they were doing. Not. Alrighty, I'll put this all back in and we'll get back to the 
project at hand. All right, so before I show you this magnificently wonderful, outrageously great tool, I'm gonna do, like I say, in my case, I've got just a little bit of digging and that's because I got in-ground sprinkler systems. And this cable's gotta go right over them. In your case, you don't have in-ground sprinklers, then you'll have zero, zero digging. Also, as you can see, I got my main power line comes underground right here, and the wire to control the sprinklers goes in down there. I've got to dig across here, and then this orange line here is telling me where I start to use the tool. And then this lining in here, where Grace is standing and you can't see, get back babies. There is an orange line that marks out where the sprinkler lines are and the wire, and then the eight means it's eight inches deep. So. As I dig across here, when I get in this area, I'll only dig down so far. And when I expose all that, then I'll come back and dig a little deeper because I am going to want to put this cable under those lines. So I'll do all this. I won't bore you with that. And when I get this dug, we'll come back and I'll show you that wonderful tool. All right, I got my trench dug. It's anywhere from 10 to 12 inches. Now I know some of you are sitting there saying, this is ridiculous. You ain't got to dig it that deep. You don't have to put it that deep. Well, you might be right. But I've got a plan for a future project that requires me to have a trench eight inches deep. This is 10 to 12. I ain't got to worry about it. I won't hit it again. So knowing the end from the beginning, as they say, is a good thing. But in any regard, I still want it 12 inches. So I got this. Now I'm ready for that amazing tool. What is that tool, you ask? This little gizmo right here called the Wilton Thin Line trenching spade. It's made of boron steel. Apparently that's really, really hard steel. I don't want to say razor sharp, but it comes to a ground to a sharp edge. From the point to this here, 12 inches. Nice handle. You can get it with a T handle if you want. Come 6, 10, and 12. I got 12 because that's what I need to do. And this is going to be a game changer. Ask how? Well, let me show you. And just so you know, this isn't sponsored. I bought it with my own money. There's no idea I'm making this video, but this is how it works. Probably asking, well, what about the hole after you're left? Don't worry, I'll show you. Just like that. Back and forth. Still easier than digging a trench. Another thing, I've got a heavy clay-based soil. That makes it just a tad harder. So I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna get to my sprinkler set right here. I'll dig this out like I did that. Trench a little bit on the other side. I'll get the cable laid from here to there because I want the cable to go under the sprinkler system. And then it's smooth sailing. And I'll leave a link down below to the website if you happen to want to get one of these. I could say it comes in six, 10, and 12. Six, I'm sure, is a lot easier, faster. But again, I keep repeating myself. Cable company told me 12 inches. I'm putting it 12 inches. See how long it takes to get to there. 17 after. See how long it takes to get 23 feet. So it took me right at 20 minutes, 21 minutes to go 23 feet. So 60, 65 foot in an hour. Once I kind of got the hang of uh, how to throw it and use it, it did go faster. Yeah, it's a little more work. I guarantee it's less work than digging a trench. Now, the only way you're going to go faster is to go rent a trencher. But there's a the thing. You got to drive down, pay for it, bring it back, use it, clean it up, take it back, and pay for the rental. For what it costs to rent that, you can probably buy one of these. Now, I'm going 12 inches, so it's a little more work. Or six inches is going to be, well, let's say half the work here, but you can easily see how the cable's going to go in there or any kind of wiring or probably up to like three quarter inch uh, conduit. Now, already I got my hole dug there, as you can see, got it underneath the pipes and I got a spade width on the other side. I unhooked my cable from the box and I'm going to feed it in. It's time to plant some cable. And I just have to be careful of the end here so I don't screw that wire up. Basically put it underneath there, run it down. Kind of nice, it just falls down in there. Same thing here, run it under the wire and the pipes. Now I got this set for plenty of slack. Feed it back up through the little rubber grommets. Now I'm making sure I have plenty of slack up in here. Zip tie the box shut. Now put these little fasteners on there. See the cable's running down in there. It's kind of falling into the hole underneath that pipe. See it drop right down in there. What I found is, is because my dirt, if you will, is so clay based, hard as a rock. So I go along and I water up the edge here like this. 
really well. Then it's much easier. Just go along and push it back down on each side. And you can tell when you've pushed it down, it's flat. See how much that's already closed up? Sealed back up. So you see, I got all this done. And now you can see my cut line come together really nice. Give that a couple of weeks, some rain. You won't know it's there. All right, we're back out here this morning. It's not quite as cold today, so no hat. So when I took the cover off of where the cable runs in, you can see it's a deep trench down in there. And so I had to dig a pretty good sized pit there to get to the bottom of that so I can put my new cable in there. And you can see where the old cable came out of. And then the other thing I did is I did marking paint on the ground, kind of give me a guide as to where I'm going, especially over here, because I want a gentle curve. Because to use that thing, it's kind of hard to make a curve, but I got a, another shovel I'm gonna use to help make that. So I've gotten from over there, trench to right here, where I need to start making my turn. And you know, this is straight, and it doesn't make a very good curve. And it makes it kind of hard to keep an open channel. So what I'm gonna do is take my sharpshooter kind of get a curve started, go straight and kind of get a curve started. And it's going to be the same principle. I'm just going to put this down in the ground, wiggle it back and forth. And this is why a shovel won't work very well for this because you are definitely going to bust the handle if you had to do it a lot. Now I can just take a spade. This handle and stuff is very strong. It does not bend one lick. And there you have a nice gentle curve. Cable can go in and won't get kinked. Did the same thing here. Again, it's a nice gentle curve right into the pit. Uh, it's probably about 50 feet, two thirds of this. And it took me, oh, including digging that trench over there to that pit, two, two and a half hours is all. So next I need to undo the cable from its box there, get it put in there and run under the fence. Oh, a little tip. When you're doing this, you want to keep a wide stance. Don't keep close or you'll push your dirt back in on your hole. Okay, let's drop the cable in. And they sure gave me plenty of extra, which is good. Now the cable lays down in there nice and loose to a solid six to seven inches. I did find that if I watered it, it slicked up the cable. It also made the walls slicker and it's much easier to get that last little bit. Just like that. And I'm just pushing gently. Some places it just drops in there as easy as pie. I'll finish poking this all the way down. We'll get this closed up, get that hole filled and packed in, get it all hooked back up. We'll look at the finished product. And with that, 75 foot of cables buried. You can hardly tell where I did it. The ground's closed up so nicely. Now, if you don't have any digging to do like I did, won't even take you all day. But this last 50 foot was even digging and doing all that I had to do, four hours complete. So if you started in the morning, you could easily do 7,500 feet if you don't have to do any digging. This is way easier than going renting a trencher and trenching all this. It makes less mess and it's hidden very well when you're done. And it dang sure beats digging that trench by hand. If you like these outdoor projects, Click the link here to this playlist where I do a bunch more outdoor projects you can look at. And if you want to see how I built this beautiful fence and did all the concrete work, there's a link right here. You can go watch that. And remember, if you got paint in the paint, well, you're a DIY painter. So until next time, happy DIYing.